May show it this is how it is pronounced, uh, which is probably not. This game is uh, a solitaire game with a two player cooperative version, which I haven't tried. I played this game solitaire only. That's for the topic. We're Vikings trapped inside this tomb and we're trying to dig our way out before we die of exhaustion and, and starvation. So pretty grim, pretty uh, pretty grim feel to it. Uh, there, this really has the feel of a survival game, and, and I think it works very well in that sense. And I played it before Halloween, so the mood was was right. The game comes with a small board. It is double sided. This is the side that you use to. Uh, play uh, the game the Soiter version. Here you have slots where you place tokens represent how much energy, how much life you have. If you have zero lives on the board then you lose the game. We have an area where you place your you place a duck token at the beginning of the game and you may collect more ducks later on. The duck or a goose or an albino Hawk, I don't know, I'm not an avian biologist, how would I know? And here we have some uh, slots where you place tokens representing the dirt and the rocks that you will have to clear if you are to get the heck out of there. You will be playing cards to perform actions to remove these tokens. If you remove them all from the board before you die, you win the game. If you die, you lose the game. You also lose the game if you're unable to play and discard a card during your turn. And we'll see what that means. The game revolves indeed around the playing of these cards. They have different effects and some kinds of effects that apply when you play the card. And there may be effects that you apply when you discard the card. Some cards may be played for an effect and discarded without, it, without effect. So there is a variety of different things that happen when you play a card and or when you discard a card. This is the basic deck. The game also comes with a number of expansions. Each expansion is a set of three cards as indicated by these different symbols here. If you decide, so for example, there's an expansion. If you decide to use the expansions, you simply select one or more of them and you shuffle them into the into the main deck and there really is a number of different things that these cards do they may change gameplay significantly they do give you different options and more agency so there definitely is replay value in this but as for the main game you shuffle your deck whether it includes uh, expansions or not and then you draw a hand of five cards and you're ready to go after you settle the board like that of course because Oh, great, great hand. Uh, because then you start taking turns. During your turn, you will play a card to a row of cards that will be growing during the game, and you discard a card. That's it. Play a card and discard a card. You can discard and play, or or play and then discard. It's up to you, and that can be a relevant decision. When you play or discard a card, simply you trigger the effect that it says based on whether you played it or discarded it. And that's just the idea. These cards are super important. Uh, these are the ones that you need to excavate and to create a tunnel. When you play one of them, nothing happens for now. But if you played four of them in a row without interruption, then you're able to clear one of those rubble markers. And this is really the heart of the game. This is what you're trying to do. As is pretty easy, right? Play four of them in a row. The problem is that uh, some of these other things are not are not good. <laughs> Meaning, uh, some cards will give you negative effects when you discard them. But you really, if you have two or three excavation cards in a row, you really don't want to play uh, a negative card here. Pretty much erasing all the advances that you got. So the idea, as you will see uh, as you play the game, and it's easier really to figure it out than to learn it from me, but, but I'm filming this video, so I had to try to give you a, a sense. The idea is that you will try to uh, be healthy as much as you can and, and save some good cards. Then you start playing excavation cards, you give it like a push. As you start pushing to excavate, you're forced to discard some bad cards there, and you hope that you will the effects of that will not kill you. After you do that, you'll find probably a hand of cards, you won't have many excavation cards in hand, and and there will be some negative stuff. So you sort of like take a break, you try to build your next hand, build a decent hand 
to proceed on to the next push. And so, for example, I just play that card to my row and I decide now to play this one, this one. If I discard it, I lose a life. If I play it, I lose two lives and I have to put back some rubble. So that's really a card I don't want to play. I want to discard it. I discard it and I perform that effect. Then I replenish my hand and it's my next turn and I decide to play an excavation card there to my row and now I need to um, the discard a card. So this is a card that doesn't give me any penalty if I discard it, but if I play it, it gives me two lives back. So I want to save this one, not discard it. I'm going to discard this one here, which also makes me lose a life. See, all, life. See, all of a sudden I'm not as healthy as I used to be. But I'm also getting pretty close. I'm getting pretty close to my excavation, so I decide to do that. And I have other considerations. Now I have good cards and I need to discard one, so I need to decide which one I want to waste and place there. And so on and so forth. Now, uh, there you go. For example, I'm able now to complete a set of four, so I remove some of that dirt and now I decide what I want to uh, discard and I continue like that. An interesting wrinkle that adds to the interest of the game. You may have noticed that there are two different types of runes on top of the cards, red and blue. If at the end of a round after you draw, I suppose I decide to do that. At the end uh, of a round after a draw, if all of my cards are all blue or all red, I go crazy. Which means I'm gonna have to discard my hand, reshuffle the, the 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 discard pile into the draw pile to make a new draw deck. This is often bad, but it is absolutely necessary because it is the only way that you will ever be able to uh, make a new draw deck. And remember, one of the ways in which you lose the game, you either die or you're unable to play cards because all of the cards are in the and this card pile and you don't have any cards anymore. So actually that's another interesting wrinkle there because you really have to time when madness arrives. You have to time it right and limit its damages uh, because another penalty of of getting crazy, of, of going mad, is that after you lose a life permanently, not just temporarily, it's out of the game, now your maximum is reduced. So you cannot go mad too early, but you will have to lose some sanity at some point, very Lovecraftian in my opinion, um, but you will have to lose some sanity at some point and timing that right, figuring out when it's time to, man, there are some really good cards in there, I wish I got them back, I need them back. Especially when you start adding the expansions, then you add more strategy because I really want to be able to use that effect again. So how do I do it? Uh, I'm going to try to keep hands, cards in hand that will maximize my chances. So if they're all blue, uh, I have three blue, then it maximizes my chances of getting two blue and going crazy. On the other hand, uh, maybe there's a card that I want to do, uh, I like to play, but if I play it, I'm left with all cards on one color. And maybe now I don't want to go crazy, so now I have to figure out, for example, I may play a card uh, that I don't want to play all that much, but this way ensures that I have a blue and a red in my hand, making sure I don't go crazy if it's a time where I don't want to lose my sanity yet. So there are a couple of interesting elements here that are they're not probably going to be obvious the first time you play the game. The first time you play the game, you're like, well, whatever, play a card, discard a card. Pretty obvious, I just want to get these four here, recover a couple of lives, and do it again. And in essence, it still is that, but there is more about it than meets the eye. There is more interest, there is more tension, because you have basically an interesting element here. Uh, a nice combination of hand management and, and, and resource management in a, in a situation of terrifying scarcity. And at the same time, of course, push your luck, because whatever, I do want to play that card and I and it leaves me three blue cards in my hand and I hope I don't go insane now. So it's a simple game, very simple, but uh, but it really works to me. I found as, as a Soiter game that you can play in 10, in 10 minutes if you lose early or 15, 20 minutes if you're able to do the whole thing to survive. Uh, I think it's a very 
it's a very enjoyable, entertaining game. Again, the mood is so dark that maybe you won't feel like playing it every day. Like, oh, right before dinner, so then I'm going to be grumpy during dinner. But maybe after dinner, before going to bed, and, you know, in case you want to have some nightmares or something. I don't know. I don't know you. But I know that this game is quite enjoyable and interesting. It has a very dark feel to it, which, again, there, there is a place and time for the kind of experience. Gameplay-wise, it was surprisingly entertaining and it had a surprising amount of decisions and strategy coming out of a game with such simple idea at its core. I mean, the general rules are one page of, of rule, really. Of rules. It'll take you maybe a little longer to figure out all the effects and even a little longer to figure out how to optimize and maximize them. But you play the game once or twice with the basic deck, then you start adding the expansions that to me really add fun and interest. Some of these expansions are just, well, there's a lot that goes into thinking how to avoid some of the dangers and exploit some of the opportunities that they give you. But there's a lot going on and it's just a really fun, a really uh, well-designed, well-thought-out game.